we would like to welcome you to the second annual Acres of Angels Senior Gala. You all look fabulous. So just relax, eat, dance, and have a great time. I would like to introduce the CEO and president of the Acres of Angels, Ms. Edna Griggs. Thank you. You all look beautiful. Well, I was supposed to come and just talk a little bit about my organization, actually what Acres of Angels, how I got started, where we are today, and looking at you lovely seniors out here, which of all of y'all are part of my family. We started Acres of Angels back in 2009. Uh, actually, it was, we were actually doing things for children living with diabetes. I'm a diabetic, and so I feel like if we can save our kids, that maybe we can keep them from getting diabetes like many of us in this room are. So we started out uh, doing a uh, Mardi Gras party every year. Part of the proceeds actually go to uh, Texas Children's Hospital kids living with diabetes. After I retired uh, in 2012, uh, I was always interested in my seniors because look, I'm a baby senior now myself. So I said, you know, let me just start visiting some of the senior homes and seeing what they're doing and seeing how I can get involved. And uh, this is how it started. And so I started off with uh, over at Chelsea, which I had probably been there for about five years. And so I told them, you know, it's time for me to branch out and see what some other seniors are doing. Let me go visit and find out and show my love and share it somewhere else. So then I started visiting Pepper Tree. Start visiting Primrose. <laughs> Start visit, visiting uh, Palisade of Inwood. And then I even had branched out a little bit further out at uh, Zion, uh, which is out in Third Ward. And um, they said so far. It was too far for them to come. So they didn't come. But that's okay. We send their love to them. But this is how it got started. And so what we could every year in January, we actually do a Women's Empowerment Summit. That's in January. In March, we do a diabetes walk. And this is your second. You know, I thought, I said, you know what? Let me bring all my seniors together. And that way, y'all are not going to just sit here today and mingle among your little group. You're going to get up and mingle with some other seniors in other places so you can actually get familiar and know who they are. And that's why I did the annual event, it was kind of to bring all y'all together, give you a chance to look beautiful and know that we love you, seniors. And we have a special guest in the house is going to come up here and going to tell you just how special you are. And I would like to introduce our mayor that's here today. Now, that tells you a lot how he thinks about y'all because he's here with us today. <laughs> mayor Turner, please come on up and say something to these beautiful seniors in the house. And we love you. Thank you. You're welcome. Look, don't, don't go anywhere. You know, this is a very special person. I mean, this is a very special, special person. And uh, Andrew Griggs could have asked me to go anywhere and I would be there, okay? Uh, because literally, she cares. I mean, she cares. She doesn't just talk it, she shows it. And she's right. I mean, look, if there are seniors down in Galveston, she'll be down there, you know? But, um, but when I met her, uh, she stepped forward to, to be of help to me, and, and I tell you, she, I mean, she worked hard for me, and I appreciate that. Uh, and she has never asked for anything for herself. You know something? She's never asked, always working for others, never asking of anything for herself. I think the, the best way we can, we can return what she's given to us is just to help somebody else. And she is passionate about the seniors. Now, I tell you, now she'll kill you, bury you, and tell somebody you're still alive <laughs> if you mess with these seniors. She is passionate about these seniors. So I want to I wanna, I wanna thank, thank you. Seniors and kids, those are two very special groups. And both groups relate very well to Edna Grizz. Because you know what? Seniors can feel your heart. And children know whether you're real or fake. Okay. And so she is the real 
thing. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you. Thank Give you. it up to Edna Griggs. <laughs> Look, it's just an honor to be with the seniors. We are all standing on seniors' shoulders, and, and you all are looking real good this, this, this evening, this afternoon. And I just wanted to come and just to, to just offer my, my support. Uh, because so you can't have a blessed city if you really if you don't take care of your seniors. Uh, so when it comes to our seniors and our kids, those are very two very special groups. I got my community service, faith-based coordinator, fixer, uh, Janice Weaver is here. You know, Janice, have you spoken already? You on the radio? Janice, come on up, you know. Janice, Janice is my community service faith-based coordinator. And if you need anything, if you need anything, Edna, you know, when you need, you know, can reach me, you call Janice Weaver, uh, and she will, she will move it and get, and get it done. And I appreciate, I appreciate her because she, she just has a heart for service. Just like Edna, y'all both worked at AT&T, AT&T AT &T yeah. retirees together. Union. Yeah, so we're, we're all ATT. I was Southwestern, Southwestern Bell. I was Southwestern Bell. I was, that's, I was a Southwestern Bell employee, you know, until, you know, because I was the one when you called and asked for numbers. Alvin, I was the one, I was one of the first guys working as a 411 operator. You called and asked for a number, and uh, I would give you the number. And at Capitol and San Jacinto downtown, that's where, I, that's where, you know, so you call, ask me for a number. I did not know that they could, uh, they, that they could record you, monitor your, 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 your phone service. And um, one day I was just on that phone, and she called in, asked for a number, and I was looking for a number, saying, and how are you doing today? And she was talking, I said, you know, uh, you know and what's your number? And, uh, <laughs> Next thing I know, I felt somebody doing like this. <laughs> Sylvester, uh, when you finish giving the person the number, come and see me. So I, I went back in the office, and, and uh, she told me, my, the supervisor said, um, young man, at Southwestern Bell, we give numbers. We don't take numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, i tell you what I'm going to do. She gave me a book, a big book with every piece of furniture at, in that building, 12 different floors. And she said, look, I want you, it, it was the furniture and the inventory number. She said, I want you to find every piece of furniture <laughs> in this building and check it off. I said, in this book? <laughs> she said, yeah, you're pretty good at getting, finding numbers. <laughs> That's a true story. That's a true story. I said, I tell you, if I didn't need this money, I'd be, I'd be long gone out of here. <laughs> but look, but we are here to service seniors. What Edna has asked me is to make sure we do everything we can to take care of you. We want to make sure you're safe. We also want to work on your transportation needs. We want to make sure if there's storms come, you know, we keep you safe. All of the things that you need to meet your needs to let you know that this city cares about each and every one. Council member Amanda Edwards is back there. I tell you, well come on up council member. And while she's coming, Ms. Weaver, just let them know what we do. Okay. Well, basically bottom line, what we do is serve. We serve you. Uh, anytime you call, of course Edna has called on your behalf if you're having problems with your management and the facilities that you live in. We're, we're right there. Yes, ma'am. You calling me? Yes, ma'am. You got it. We will talk. So see how quick we do that? We just, we're instant servants. <laughs> how about that? So that's what we do. Uh, our seniors or any of you uh, from the community ask for our help. We try, we, one thing, that he didn't know at Southwest and Bell was customer service because that's what I was taught. Customer service and attendance was, was what Southwest and Bell, AT&T, whoever they, they want to call themselves, that's what they were about. Well, City Hall is the same exact way. 
customer service. You are our number one priority because you are Houston. You make Houston. And without you, our mayor, and y'all give it up for our mayor, fourth largest city in the United States of America, and he is working very hard for you. So Edna normally is your point of contact. She will reach out to me on your behalf or either the young lady in the back, the young, young lady in the back. We will take care of whatever your need is because that's what we're, you know, what we're for. So my email is janice.weaver at houstontx.gov. I've got cards. You can call me at 832-393. And what's the rest of my number? <laughs> 0849. <laughs> you don't know my number? Or you can call 311. And they will connect you with me directly. So we're here to meet your needs in the community. Edna, my sister, my retiree sister, my union sister, thank you for you know what you do. She's a servant. We, I had my blood drive. She was so mad at the union people because they didn't support it. She was, she was telling them, y'all should have been there. Y'all should have been there. But we're going to do it bigger and we're going to do it better. So Because she's going to be here to part, partner with me next year, Mayor with that. And so, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Janice Weaver. And then, look, you have, a, you have your city council uh, person here at large. I know when we were all on the campaign trail, she was right there going everywhere. And uh, you all know your city council person at large, but certainly she's standing right here, Council Member Amanda Edwards. Thank you, Mayor, and I don't like to follow the mayor because he is such a prolific and dynamic speaker, and he really does care about all of you. Uh, one of the things that we do at City Hall is we debate, we debate, we discuss, we discuss, and the mayor is about doing, and he wants to make sure that we're doing for the community. So can we give the mayor another round of applause for all of his hard work, especially looking out, making sure we don't have a community of haves and have-nots? And so we want to applaud him and thank him and support him in his efforts. Um, as the mayor stated, I'm Councilmember Edwards, and I'm one of your at-large city council members. And it's been more than a pleasure to serve the community, to be partnership with you all. I, won't, I cannot tell you how important it is for you all to view us as your partners. Um, it's one thing if you think of us as somebody down the street, downtown, not connected to the community. You have to understand that we are relying on you all to give us the information of what's going on in the neighborhood, what's going on in the community, what do we need to know about so that we can address it. And so we rely on you just as much as you rely on us to be our connection to the information of the things that are needed on the ground. So I just want to thank you. I know a number of you have called me personally on my cell phone, so a number of you understand and appreciate the value in having that partnership. And, and so again, we don't just say this just because we have have a mic in our hands and we're on the stage. We really mean we want you to think of us as a partnership. And so just as much as we need to get information from you, if we've got information we've got to get out in the community, we need you to help spread that too. And so again, thank you so much for being so engaged. I'm so proud of Ms. Griggs and all the work she puts into this effort every year and every year it grows. So thank you so much, Ms. Griggs, for your work and thanks to all of you for being so engaged in the community. Thank you. Now, lastly, let me, let me just take 90 seconds. Let me take 90 seconds to talk a little politics with you, okay? Because one group that I know votes, those are the seniors. You all vote. So I want to talk a little politics with you. I know I don't have to encourage you to vote this election cycle. I know you're just ready, fired up, and ready to go vote. But there are two propositions at the very back. At the very back. I mean, you're going to have to at the very back. Proposition A, Proposition B. Proposition A is what we call Rebuild Houston. It's not raising your fees. It's not raising any taxes. All it's saying is that the money that's currently coming in under the existing formula will be dedicated to drainage, flooding, and streets. No taxes, no fees. But you know, after Hurricane Harvey, we want the dollars from Rebuild Houston to go to drainage, flooding streets. So if you vote for Proposition A, you're saying put it in a lockbox, drainage, flooding streets. Proposition A is good. Proposition B is been a little bit testy. I love my firefighters, all 4,000, I love them. But this year I've had to negotiate with all three of my employee groups, the municipal workers. 
the people who pick up your trash, the people who work in the libraries, the multi-service centers, the parks, the libraries, those are the municipal workers. Fill the potholes in the streets, worked out an agreement with them. They're getting a pay raise of 6% over three years. Three in the first year, two in the second, one in the third. 6% total. My police officers, the ones that are out there on the street, their contract was going to expire at the end of this year, and we have negotiated a contract with them of 7% over two years. 4% in the first, 3% in the second. The firefighters, they have been at the table. I offered them 9.5% over three years. It could be 4% in the first, 3% in the second, just like police, and an additional 2.5%. They have turned that down. They've said no. Proposition B is coming from them, and if you vote for B, you are telling, you are mandating the city to pay them uh, in the first year a minimum pay raise of 29%, costing the city $100 million a year. Now, let me tell you, you may choose to do that, but if you do that, let me tell you what's going to happen. We are under a revenue cap. You voted that in in 2004, which means I can't raise my property taxes. So if you mandate that we give the firefighters a pay raise of 29%, and mind you, this is only on their pay raises. This is not about the trucks. This is not about the EMS vehicles or their clothing. It, 100 million only on pay raises then in order for me to balance my books, I'm going to have to lay off some of the firefighters and some of the police officers and some of the municipal workers and city services are going to be disrupted because there's no way you can hold me under my revenue cap and increase my bottom line by $100 million and balance my books. I can't do it. I'm just telling you, I can't do it. So property... Proposition B is not good. So, to sum it up, Proposition A, rebuild Houston, drainage, flooding streets, Proposition A is good. Proposition B, 29% pay raise, $100 million, just to one group, Proposition B is not good. A is good, <laughs> B is bad. <laughs> A is good. B is bad. A is good. B is bad. Thank you. And let me just say to you, because firefighters do deserve a pay raise, the 9.5% I have offered still is on the table. And even if you vote no on Proposition B, I will still offer the firefighters the 9.5%. Because they do deserve a pay raise, they just deserve a pay raise based on what we can afford, okay? So they still would get the 9.5 even if you vote no, okay?